Hi, my name is Jim Moyle, and uh, this is the introduction to uh, my new YouTube series on PowerShell and Pesta, Series 2, Episode 1. Um, <clears throat> if you're looking for jumping straight into the code, then uh, you should move on to the next episode in this series, which will be uh, published relatively soon. Right here, I'm going to explain why you should use PESTA, what you should use it for, and, and what I'm going to cover in this series. So, first of all, PESTA is a unit testing framework for PowerShell. And <clears throat> it can also do uh, many other things as well. And uh, if you get to know and love it, then it will definitely make your coding life in terms of your PowerShell product projects a lot easier. Having said that, it is more work at the start, but it's well worth it. So what can we use PESTA for? The first thing is immediate feedback on code logic. And this means that we can tell pretty instantly, if we set it up correctly, whether any changes we've made have broken your code. And it means that uh, whenever you make a change, you can immediately test all of your functions, even without the surrounding infrastructure being there, and see that whether or not the logic in your code is still working. It means that you don't have to code a whole bunch of, uh, of things, wait till you've done a day's work, and then go, right, now I need to do some testing before I go home. You can do it along the way. So as soon as you've made a change to BC code, then you run your tests, you get your feedback, and you move on. So it means that it's going to reduce the amount of troubleshooting and debugging that you have to do and hopefully make it a lot easier for you to uh, to keep uh, keep your code in a good state. Sort of on the same topic, um, there's a lot of projects that uh, I've come across where there's a whole load of dead code in these projects, maybe hundreds of lines of dead code. And the reason being is, well, people are sat there thinking, well, what if I, what if I remove this? Is it going to break something? Do I know or everything that that code is doing and everything that code is a, a prerequisite for. I'll tell you what, I'll just leave that code in there, you know. It's better to leave it in and make sure that it's and it's not and it's not being used than take it out and break something. Well, if you leave a whole lot of dead code in your project, it makes it much much harder to troubleshoot and maintain, not just for other people but also for yourself later on. I know personally, if I'm going back to my code after a little while, a few months maybe, and I'll look at it, I was like, I have no idea what on earth I was doing there. So making sure that you've only got code in there that is actually in use and is actually necessary and isn't stale is a massive help for you in, in making sure that your PowerShell projects are, as I say, in a good state. So we can also use PESTA to simulate a whole lot of different things. So if you're in a situation where you're writing code for a customer, but you don't have access for that to that customer's environment, well, how do you query AD in that case? How do you query a vCenter when you don't have one in your lab environment? Well, we can use PESTA to, to simulate the returns and the calls to that infrastructure. Not only can we simulate when it's missing, we can also simulate different states. So <clears throat> if you want to know what happens when your vCenter is down, then we can do that. Now obviously if you're running and testing your scripts in a production environment or even in a UAT or a test environment, it may not be possible to say every time you want to test your code, can I bring down the vCenter? So I want to make sure that I've got the right response to that vCenter being down. It also helps you think about your code in a logical manner. Because 
one of the things that I found when writing tests for my code is <clears throat> that it clarifies um, your plans and what your code needs to do. And I found numerous hundreds of bugs uh, in my code just just by writing the tests, not not even running them, uh, and having to think about uh, think about what um, the functions I'm writing should be doing and should be returning. Um, and around that, it also keeps you in line with good practice. Just because the way that Pestra has been written is it will test good good written code, well written code, much easier than uh, badly written code. So if you're in line with good practice, then it means your code is much easier to test. And the fact that these two are this sort of feedback loop between each other means that you'll develop much better um, much better practices when you're when you're writing your your codes your functions and your modules and your scripts um, it integrates very well with pretty much all of the ci cd um, tools out there now ci cd is continuous uh, improvement or continuous integration continuous development don't worry about what that is yet um, later on in the series we'll we'll go into different ci cd tools and uh, see how Pesto integrates with those. It is easy to use. I've run into people who say, well, I can write my own tests for my own code. Why do I need some other tool to do it for me? Well, if you've got a framework there, it's much easier to write your tests than if you're starting from scratch. Um, <clears throat> available everywhere on Windows. So you can install it on pretty much any version of PowerShell and in fact on Windows 10 and 2016 it's actually baked into the OS so Microsoft provide it to you in the OS. Um, <clears throat> prevents regression books. So if you're writing your code and you're deciding and you found a bug and maybe it's returned because you've already written a test for that bug it means that you'll never be unaware of that bug returning. So I've seen quite a lot of times where people fix a bug and then they think they never need to test it again. And maybe one of the prerequisites has changed or um, something else has changed in your, in your module. If you write a test for it, you will never suffer that bug again. Um, it encourages laziness. I'm all about less effort. And if I have written my PESA tests as I'm writing the code, you could do it up front, but I usually do that as I'm writing the code, then I can be super lazy about testing because it's all done for me. And that means that um, <clears throat> I can delete stuff, I can take stale code out, I can try stuff with full confidence that I'm not going to break anything else, or if I do break anything else, I'll know instantly which is always so much easier to fix if you know as soon as you change something whether um, your code's been broken. And although it is designed for unit testing for developing PowerShell code, you can actually also use it for infrastructure testing as well to make sure that um, infrastructure is configured correctly. Both, you know, if you're in a pod design between pods or in fact over time to make sure you haven't got a configuration drift. I'm not sure if we'll get to um, infrastructure testing with Pesto in this series. Um, let's call that a stretch goal, shall we, for the uh, for the series. Um, what are we going to cover? Definitely. So we're going to cover unit testing. And we're going to do this in a lot of depth. Um, <clears throat> once you know how to do unit testing, you'll be able to do the rest fairly easily because the the, the complications and, and, the, and the detail in PESTA is mostly in the unit testing. It actually gets easier when you're looking at integration tests and uh, infrastructure tests. Um, <clears throat> so this is what happens when you just do unit tests, right? Definitely both windows opened when they tried them individually, but, well, they don't anymore. We will definitely touch on integration tests, but as I just said, um, uh, you'll probably be okay with uh, with designing those yourself once you've done unit. 
And the last one that I tend to find that uh, is needed is, is stress testing. Now, I would normally do this in Azure, and it's not something that um, I do very often because A, it's very um, uh, time intensive, and B, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, money intensive in terms of spin up Azure resources and everything else. We'll probably not get to stress testing in this series. We'll see how I feel towards the end of it. All right, so I just wanted to do a little introduction video just with some slides, just to check um, that everybody knows exactly what's going to be coming down the line. In the next video, we'll show you how to um, set up and install and do the very basics of your first Pester experience. Thank you very much.